What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with that instant analysis on analysisplayground.com on YouTube. We're going to talk about the Dallas Mavericks losing to the Denver Nuggets. This was a tough game to watch as it was very slow and very goofy because Luka hasn't really been that clutch in the fourth quarter. I know he's getting a lot of praise for what he do because he deserves it. He actually should be an MVP candidate, honestly and truthfully just because of the way he carries this team offensively and the way he's able to shoulder the load of that. They fall to 9-7, and 8-3 and three at home, 10-6 and six for the, the Denver Nuggets, 6-5 and five away from Denver. Uh, we're going to start with the Dallas Mavericks. They shot 44% from the field, 35% from three, 57% from the free throw line. Dorian Finney-Smith didn't hit the, the shots that he needed to. Same with Reggie Bullock. Um, Dorian Philly Smith, one of five from the field, one of three from three. I mean, one of four from three, three rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block, one personal foul, negative three, three points. Uh, Reggie Bullock, 26 minutes, one of five from the field, one of five from three. All his attempts were from the three point line, no free throws, four rebounds, one steal, one personal foul, negative 25 and plus minus three points. Dwight Powell, 11 points. Five or six from the field, one or four from the free throw line. Um, he had five rebounds total, one assist, one steal, one turnover, three personal fouls, negative six and plus minus. Spencer Dinwiddie didn't shoot the ball well either. Five of 15 from the field, one of eight from the three-point line, eight assists, one rebound, one block, four turnovers, two personal fouls, negative 14 and plus minus. And Luka Dantich didn't um, have a dominant game. He usually been going for 30 to 40 plus a triple-double. He came close to the triple-double, but <clears throat> ultimately missed out on a double-double and a triple-double. 7 of 16 from the field, 2 of 8 from 3, 6 of 10 from the free throw line, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 1 steal, 4 turnovers, which ain't that bad for a Luka game. 2 personal fouls, plus 1 and plus minus, 22 points total. Um, I think this was a disappointing game, even though they came close to winning this. When you look at the fact that they didn't have Nikola Jokic and they didn't have Jamal Murray playing a bunch of minutes um, and they still ended up losing this game, <clears throat> this got to be a huge disappointment for the Dallas Mavericks. This is a game that they have to win. They should win if they don't want to be in the playing territory. And they ended up falling up short. Their shooters and their role players have inconsistent shooting nights, and they sometimes they lack aggression and be a little bit too passive. I think that that's one of the biggest problems with the, the Dallas Mavericks. Bertans did help them off the bench, though. 15 points, a plus 21 and plus minus. But he did have four personal fouls what hurt him in this team because he only was able to play 14 minutes because of it. Two assists, one rebound, one of one from the free throw line, four or five from three, five or seven from the field. Tim Hardaway Jr. also had a terrible shooting game. O of nine from the field. Five of them was from the three-point line. He did not make a three tonight out of all five attempts. He did get to the free throw line twice, um, shooting the ball 100%. Um, three rebounds, two assists, one steal, one turnover, one personal foul, plus eight and plus minus. Um, two points. JaVel McGee did get some minutes tonight, 11 minutes, one of three from the field. He actually had one rebound only, one block, one plus three and plus minus two points. Christian Wood did not have a great game either. He only played 17 minutes, two or three from the field, one or two from the free throw line. He did grab seven rebounds, which was great. Two assists, one personal foul, negative three and plus minus five points. And Josh Green was huge, the best player from the bench for them tonight. He had 23 points, plus 13 and plus minus, three personal fouls, one turnover, two rebounds, one or two from the free throw line, six or seven from the three-point line, eight or nine from the field. And that was about it in 30 minutes. But that was great to see him have a huge game. He has been a guy that has performed well for them, has started to make a good name for himself. The bad part about it is they shot 21 free throws tonight and only made 57% of them. When you look at the fact that that was the biggest reason why they lost this game tonight and one of the reasons why they couldn't win this game was because they shot so, so poorly from the free throw line tonight, 57%. They also only had um, a situation where 
Luka got knocked around, but he's not a great free throw shooter, and neither is the other players on his team. They also only had 18 personal fouls. Um, that was too much for them. 12 turnovers. They only had three blocks and five steals total. That's not going to cut it. When you look at the Denver Nuggets side of the field, um, Jeff Green, uh, four points, four plus four and plus minus, four personal fouls, one rebound, two or two from the free throw line, one from the free throw line, only made his one shot, and then made two free throws. Bruce Brown, five or 13 from the field, or three from the three-point line, two or two from the free throw line, four rebounds, eight assists, one block, one steal, two turnover, three personal fouls, negative two and plus minus, 12 points total for him. Michael Porter Jr., 14 points, plus six and plus minus, two personal fouls, two turnovers, one block, two steals, five rebounds, one or four from the free throw line. The one three he did make was huge because it gave them the lead, and that basically sealed the game for them. Six of 11 from the field, which means he shot above 50% from the field, just didn't shoot the ball particularly well from three. DeAndre Jordan was huge for them on the rebounding end, four or five from the field, 17 rebounds total for the night, one assist, one steal, one turnover, two personal fouls, plus four and plus minus eight points. Caldwell Pope didn't shoot the ball particularly well tonight. Nine points, two of 11 from the field, one of five from three, four of four from the free throw line, four rebounds, three assists, one steal, four personal fouls, plus eight and plus minus. Zeke Najee, five points for them tonight, two of four from the field, um, one of one from the three-point line, one assist, one block, one turnover, three personal fouls, plus six. Uh, Concar, three. A three from the field, one to one from the three-point line, four rebounds, two steals, three turnovers, four personal fouls, plus one and plus minus seven points. Bones Highland did a, a great job of facilitating tonight, finding open guys, playing in the pick and roll, getting to the basket, knocking down three of eight threes, 10 of 21 from the field, mixing it up, showing that he can do multiple things besides being an effort and energy guy off that bench, showing that he can be a decision maker, a playmaker, and a scorer all rolled in one, which is great. He also shot six to six from the free throw line, three rebounds, six assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, two, two personal fouls, negative 12, and plus minus. Uh, Reed had five points, two or four from the field, one or three from three, um, two rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, negative seven, and plus minus. And Braun, two or five from the field, one, three, one or one from the three point line, four rebounds, one steal, three personal fouls, three and minus. Um, three, five points. They also shot 47% from the field, which was better than the Dallas Mavericks. They shot worse from three, but significantly better from the free throw line, 15 to 19, 78%. They outscored um, the Dallas Mavericks 25, I mean, 24 to 18 in the third quarter. The Mavericks made a comeback in the fourth quarter, 23 to 19, but the Denver Nuggets hold on after Michael Porter three, and that was the deciding game. You want to see Jokic and them get back healthy so they can continue to pad their record so they can be one of the upper echelons team. I think the Dallas Mavericks have a lot of things they still have to work out. Trying to find another star that can fit well with Luka Doncic has been tough. Porzingis didn't work out. Christian Wood has worked a little bit better. He's more physical. He attacks the basket a lot more. He can hit the mid-range. He can hit the three. The problem is he's not a starter, so he doesn't get a bulk of minutes or a lot of minutes. And I think that that's been troubling him, getting in the rhythm, trying to figure out what scheme and what type of players he's going to go against. I know he has an advantage playing against lower-level competition as he don't have to really go against starters, but he also doesn't get a chance to play with Luka. And one of the best benefits is getting lay layups and dunks and lobs because Luka draws so much attention. Luka didn't really have the 30-point, 40-point game tonight, but he still did have a chance to win it. He hasn't been as clutch as he, as he you think he will be in the fourth quarter. He had some big shots in the playoffs, had some big moments throughout his career. But throughout this season, he missed a lot of opportunities that you would love to see them take advantage of, either by having the lead, having a better cushion, or Luka ended up being clutch enough to win the game. He's not one of the clutchest players in the league, even though he has a lot of opportunities to win the game. He has tough shots to make, long-distance shots to make, and either that or find a way to get him going to the basket so he can get his push shot, a step back, or even get to the free throw line. Even though that's a little iffy, because Luka hasn't been a great free throw shooter either throughout his career. So it's kind of worrisome to see how do they build a championship team around Luka. They have the franchise player, but how do you put the right 
talent around him to get the job done and bring a title to Dallas? That's their question. That's their biggest lesson that they need to learn each and every season. I know they don't have to rush because Luka is young. He is a guy that just signed his max extension. He is one of the best players in the, in the world and in his league. It's just about trying to find what talent works, what guys rub him right, what guys defend right with him, who's the best wing defender to put with him, who's the best talent to put around him. They got a bunch of guys that can shoot and can't shoot at the same time. Some games they're hot, some games they're cold. They're more cold than they are hot. And Luka can be a little streaky offensively too when he's not getting to the free throw line and getting into that paint, especially from the three-point line. So it's interesting to see what the Dallas Mavericks do from here. And it's interesting to see what the Denver Nuggets do when they get healthy. With Jamal Murray and Jokic back, they have been one of the best teams in the league. Let's see how far they can get up that Western Conference ladder and see if they can be one of the best teams in the entire NBA by the time the season is over. But they, health is a big concern for them now, but they still are very young, and most of their young core is all locked up. And I think they didn't have Aaron Gordon tonight either, and they still was able to beat one of the best teams in the Western Conference and break that tie um, with a record of 9-6 and six and go above the Dallas Mavericks and up the standings tonight, which is important for them as they continue to try to build upon their record. I think you have to give more credit to Mike Malone as a coach. He has done a fantastic job in Denver and I think he deserved more credit for that and I think I had to give it to him first like I've been doing because he deserves it because he really been coaching his butt off. Other than that, like this video on Facebook. It will be in the description. Check out my podcast. It's these videos in audio form. Also, like this video and share. The more you like and share, the more the channel can grow. Also, thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Thanks for continuing subscribing. Thanks for continuing to watching. I want to continue to see this channel grow. If you want to continue to see the channel grow, do the small things that help that support this channel as these videos are free and it comes with a lot of knowledge and ingrained in them. Other than that, see you guys tomorrow.